government reinstates foreign workers' replacement system. Prime Minister announces Raya bonus for Felder settlers. Good evening, welcome to News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. The foreign workers replacement system for all sectors to help resolve the shortage of labour in the country will be reinstated beginning 1st of July. The system, which was suspended in 2017, would help employers save time and money in addressing the shortage of workers for their businesses. According to Human Resources Minister M. Kulasegaran, previously, employers could apply for a replacement after applying for a checkout memo or COM from the Immigration Department for foreign workers and ensuring that they have left the country. Kita ada sistem uh, EPEX, EPPAX itu, EPPAX di mana uh, permohonan boleh dibuat secara sistem dan ia akan menghalusi adakah kamu berhak atau tidak dan lepas tu uh, angka yang kamu minta akan diberi uh, oleh uh, akan diberitahu oleh uh, jabatan kerja tenaga. Speaking at a dialogue session with Perak Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, PCCI, and the Malaysian Palm Oil Association in Ipoh Perak today, applications can be made by contacting his ministry's Foreign Worker Management Division. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad held a bilateral meeting with his Japanese counterpart Shinzo Abe earlier today at the Prime Minister's office in Nagato Cho Chiyodaku in Tokyo, Japan. The two leaders discussed matters of mutual concern and interest to strengthen bilateral ties and collaboration in many fields, encompassing also trade, education, and defense. The meeting was also attended by Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Dato Marzuki Yahya and Malaysian Ambassador to Japan Dato Kennedy Jawan. Tun Dr. Mahathir in his opening remarks said Malaysia highly appreciates the support from Japan and hopes the good relationship between the two nations will continue. The Premier said Malaysia is very happy that the business community in Japan has pledged their support for investment and the country looks forward to collaborating with Japan in the future. Meanwhile, Abe in his speech said Japan will continue to support Malaysia and looks forward to reaffirming a Japan-Malaysia relationship that suits the new era in various fields and sectors. In addition, Abe said the Look East policy is the beacon of Japan and Malaysia's friendship and bilateral ties. Abe also expressed his admiration for Malaysia's relentless initiatives to improve transparency and reduce the national debt. Dun Dr. Mahathir is on the final day of a three-day working visit to Japan, during which he also delivered a keynote address to the 25th International Conference on the Future of Asia, or the Nikkei Conference. This is Dun Dr. Mahathir's fourth visit to Japan since becoming Prime Minister following the 14th general election on May 9th last year. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad confirms that all Felder settlers will be getting Duit Raya of 300 ringgit. Yeah, yes, we are giving them. Again, this is at the government expense going to cost us $34 million. But we realize the, the problems being faced by Felder settlers. We are willing to make that sacrifice for them. But of course, uh, in the end, they must deliver. They have to work hard. They don't. Uh, they should not take uh, fruit uh, from trees which they didn't plant. The payment under the Bantuan Sarahido BSH program, which began on the 28th of May, went smoothly. Deputy Finance Minister Dato Amiruddin Hamza says only the interior areas in Sabah and Sarawak have yet to receive fully and will be given out in stages. Dato Amiruddin Hamza said the government had to disperse the aid in stages and had to be done face-to-face -face as many of the recipients had no bank accounts. He added this process might take a while and may end only after Raya. 
Masih juga uh, saya difahamkan terdapat mereka yang tidak ada uh, akaun bank, terutama yang duduk di pendalaman-pendalaman lah. Uh, itu akan dibuat dengan cara yang lain lah. Maknanya uh, kita perlu menghantar apa pegawai kita untuk untuk ke tempat mereka uh, dan menyampaikannya dalam bentuk uh, sangat tunai lah. A total of 1.42 billion ringgit has been allocated, which will benefit nearly 3.6 million BSH recipients and 3.23 million of their children aged 18 and below, except for children with disabilities, whereby no age limit is imposed. A section 8 of the new West Coast Expressway or WCE between Hutan Melintang and Teluk Intan is now open to motorists. According to Deputy Works Minister Muhammad Anwar Muhammad Tahir, sections 9 and 10 of the WCE from Kampung Lekir Setiawan to Beruas Town will be open at the latest by this August. He added that the construction works at the 44 kilometer stretch are 95% complete. Speaking to reporters after officiating the opening of the Section 8 stretch, Hutan Melintang Teluk Intan of WCE at the Teluk Intan Toll Plaza today, Muhammad Anwar said the opening of this stretch is more for local road users as it can help reduce traffic congestion. Kaan jajaran Section 8 yang direka bentuk sebagai laluan dua lorong dua hala bakal menjadi laluan pintasan kepada penduduk tempatan sekitar Sabah Bernam, Bagan Datuk, Hutan Melintang, Teluk Intan dan Setiawan. In addition, Muhammad Anwar said the 12th section WCE is expected to be fully completed by the end of next year. Commenting on section 8, Hutan Melintang Teluk Intan stretch, he said it can be used from 6pm today, toll-free, until the government decides on the policy and toll rates. He said this stretch is expected to shorten travel time by about 11 minutes. Project Lintasan Kota Holdings in Jemberhad or Pro Lintas will be giving a 10% discount for Class 1 vehicles at its four highways. Now The highways are Ampang Kuala Lumpur Elevated Highway, Akle, Guthrie Corridor Expressway, GCE, Kamuning Sha'alam Highway, LKSA, and Kajang Dispersal Link Expressway or Silk. Pro Lintas Chief Operating Officer, Project and Operations Engineer Rostam Sharif Tami said the discounts are valid from 12 midnight until 11:59 p.m. this Wednesday. Discount tool sebanyak 10% ni diberikan kepada kelas satu saja. Ini juga sama adalah program CSR yang untuk untuk kita beri penghargaan kepada pengguna di berhari kita dan juga untuk memberi kata orang tu a uh, a uh, memberi kepada apa kita ni tanda terima kasih ha, untuk menggunakan lebur raya uh, yang disediakan oleh prioritaslah Speaking to the media in Shah Alam, Rostam said reload lanes at all its highways will operate as usual from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. every day, while its customer service centers will be open from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. Terengganu Menteri Besar Dr. Ahmad Samsuri Mokhtar is confident that the new drawbridge in Kuala Terengganu, the first in Southeast Asia, will have a positive effect on the local economy. The bridge, which will be temporarily open to the public from the 2nd to the 17th of June, has already generated a buzz on social media, with many taking selfies in front of the structure and posting in them online. Dr. Ahmad Samsuri said even though the 638-metre-long drawbridge connecting Kuala Tunganu and Kuala Nerus would only be open on a temporary basis to allow the authorities to test its operation system, the response from motorists is expected to be overwhelming. He said once the bridge is fully operational and open to traffic, the number of tourist arrivals to Tunganu is expected to rise by 20% in the first year. Positive impact is also expected in the surrounding areas such as Sabrang Takir and Gong Bada. He said he hoped the people would seize the opportunity to venture into small businesses or provide services that could improve their economic status. 
The 248 million ringgit drawbridge, which has two 16-storey towers, was inspired by the London Tower Bridge in England. Construction of the bridge, which has yet to be named, began in August 2014 and it is designed to be lifted to allow ships to pass through beneath. The Cebu Fire and Rescue Team earlier today managed to find the bodies of the two victims who drowned in Sungai Nanga Tutus. Sarawak Fire and Rescue Department Zone 4 Acting Chief Wan Kamarudin Wan Ahmad confirmed the discovery at the location about 5 kilometres from where the incident first occurred at Rasau near SMK Batang Igan. According to Wan Kamarudin, the body of the teenage girl, identified as 13-year-old Nuru Shahira Salam, was found at 7.05 a.m. today. At 7.20 a.m., however, the SAR team found the remains of the last victim, Trans Jungkook Tommy, age 14, floating in the water. Yesterday evening, the SAR team found the first victim's body, identified as Trisha Jungkook Tommy, age 12. During the 4 p.m. incident on Wednesday, the three victims had reportedly went swimming at the river before they went missing due to the strong water currents. A motorcyclist was killed when his motorcycle collided with another motorcycle along Jalan Betik Utama Masai Johor Baru at about 1.40 a.m. today. The victim, 40-year-old Kairoliza Mwamasaad, was heading from Masai towards Kong Kong when the incident took place. Sri Alam District Police Chief Superintendent Ismail Dola said the victim collided with the other motorcycle carrying S. Surendran, 25, was travelling from the opposite direction. Due to the impact of the collision, Superintendent Ismail said Kairul Nizam was thrown from his motorcycle and he died on the spot due to serious injuries. Meanwhile, as Surendran, who survived with injuries, was quickly taken to Sultan Ismail Hospital, Johor Bahru, for treatment. Superintendent Ismail said the case is being investigated under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. In less than 24 hours, police successfully detained three teenage boys and a man for their involvement in a snatch theft case against a senior citizen near Pasar Bilian Alustar Kuda, which took place yesterday. The four suspects are being remanded for four days starting today. According to a statement by Kota Star District Police Chief ACP Mama Rosie Jidin, the arrest took place after the victim lodged a police report at 8.30 a.m. today. The police nabbed two suspects aged 23 and 19 at Rumapangsa Tongkang Yard and Flat Seri Gemilang Mergong Alusta during the first raid. Police also seized a motorcycle in the operation. Following the arrests, ACP Mama Rosie said two other suspects aged 19 and 17 were then nabbed in the vicinity of Tongkang Yard Alusta. He added that three of the detainees were tested positive for methamphetamine. He said the case is being investigated under Section 394 of the Penal Code for committing a theft and causing hurt to the victim in the process. During the incident, the victim, 66-year-old Chu Ta Chiang, was riding her bicycle when she was approached by two motorcycles when one of the suspects snatched her handbag. Based on a closed-circuit television CCTV recordings, the victim was then cruelly dragged for several metres. Coming up after the break, EPF records first quarter income of 9.66 billion ringgit. Welcome back. The Employees Provident Fund or EPF report, reported total investment income of 9.66 billion ringgit for the first quarter, which ended 31st of March 2019 lower than the 12.88 billion ringgit recorded in the corresponding quarter of last year. In a statement, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Investment, Dato Mama Nasir Abdulatif said, given the current global and domestic economic and market environment, the results were indeed commendable. 
Equities, which made up 39% of the EPF's total investment assets, continue to be the main revenue driver, contributing 4.16 billion ringgit, equivalent to 43% of total investment income for the first quarter. Dato Mama Nasir stated the volatility of the equities asset class and its impact on earnings was cushioned by EPF's other more stable assets groups, such as fixed income. He said despite its volatile nature, this asset class has higher long-term expected returns. Moreover, he said equities will continue to play a pivotal role in enhancing returns and ensuring EPF are able to declare dividends of at least 2% above inflation. A total of 50% of EPF's investment assets are in fixed income instruments, which continue to provide consistent and stable income. Sabah Chief Minister Datuk Sri Mama Shafi Abdul says people of Sabah should have the right mindset if they want Sabah to become an industrial state which would boost the local economy and prevent youth migration to other states for job opportunities. He also said that the right mindset is important if they want to lay the solid foundation as an industrial state. Speaking at the closing ceremony of the Keamatan Festival in Penampang, if the right mindset is set by the Rakyat of Sabah, it will definitely boost effort of making the state as one of the most viable industrial state in the future. Meanwhile, commenting on the Keamatan Festival, Datuk Sri Shafi said the festival, together with the other festivals celebrated in the country, should be a celebration of uniting the various races in the country. The Kaamatan is a form of harvest festival celebrated annually in the state of Sabah and is normally celebrated by the ethnic Kadazan Dusuns as well as by other related ethnic groups in the state. The festival usually lasts for the whole of the month of May. The Shah Alam City Council MBSA in Selangor will construct a multi-level car park next to the new bus terminal in Section 17 for the benefit of its users. Deputy Mayor Muhammad Rashidi Ruslan said the construction of the car park, which will feature 300 parking bays, have been approved by the council and it is now in the process of appointing a contractor. While accompanying Selangor Local Government, Public Transportation and New Village Development Committee Chairman Ng Si Han at the terminal, Muhammad Rashidi said the council expects the project to be completed in two years. He was responding to complaints by terminal users on the lack of parking facilities in and around the terminal. Meanwhile, Ng said he was satisfied with operations and facilities at the terminal so far, which he noted were far more modern and comfortable compared to the terminal in Section 13. The long-awaited bus terminal opened for operations on May 1st and features a comfortable waiting area, surau, stalls and drop-off and pick-up zones. The terminal focused on services serving the northern, southern and east coast routes, besides being integrated with the smart Selangor bus services and taxis. And that's it for this evening's News on 2. In our top story, government reinstates foreign workers' replacement system. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to TV2 and have a pleasant Friday evening.